the end of Torah reading cycle for this year. And as always, the last Torah portion is Vezot HaBeracha. And this Parsha, Vezot HaBeracha, we are reading normally and we read it this year on the holiday of Simchat Torah, which just finished. It recounts the blessings Moses bestowed upon each of the tribes, the story of Moses' Moses's death, and describes the greatness of, this, of his personality, of this greatest prophet of all and his deeds. As per God's instructions, Moshe ascends the Mount Neba, and once on top of the mountain, God showed him all of the land of Israel. And then Moshe, Moses has died at the age of 120. Until his last moment, his eyes were never dimmed and his skin never dried. The Israelites mourned Moses for 30 days and Joshua immediately assumed the mantle of leadership. The Torah concludes with a very heartfelt eulogy for Moses. He was the greatest prophet to ever live and he performed incredible and awesome miracles before the eyes of all of Israel. And that's the content of this Parsha. The Parsha starts with these words. Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. Our sages remark that this is the only verse in Torah where Moses is identified as a man of God with the implications particularly related to his blessing of Israel as a nation. They also, our sages note, that he gave, it says as if he gave only one blessing, but he actually gave many. He blessed each tribe individually. Any questions, uh, the questions arise basically, why the first words of this portion, Vizot HaBeracha, and this is the blessing, uh, a singular, refer to one blessing. One of the answers is that Moshe wanted to encompass all blessing for individual tribes into one nation, as if all the tribes are part now of the same united Israel. Moses was the prophet of prophets, as Torah says in this Parsha, never again did there arise in Israel a prophet like Moses, whom Lord singled out face to face. So, being the prophet of the prophets, it's obvious we, can, we know he could see the future, the whole future of history of humanity in general, and the Jewish people specifically. And when Moshe was blessing the tribes individually, but with one blessing, he was blessing all future generations as well. And that means you and me and the, all Jewish people around the world who live today as well. This week we celebrated the seven days of Sukkot. And we were praying for well-being of the whole world during the seven days of Sukkot. Because each day we were uh, doing the sacrifices of initially 13 bulls, then 12, and then 11, and so on. And altogether 70 bulls, which is the number of nations on this planet as far as the Torah was concerned. So for seven days we were praying for well-being of the whole humanity. However, on the eighth day, which is Shmini Atzeret, we have like an after party, the close family party with, of Jewish people with Hashem. We no longer shake the love 
but we still eat in the sukkah, and that's what we did a couple of days ago. And and pray for well-being of Jewish people. On the next day, we celebrate Simchat Torah. Yesterday, receiving of the Torah. On this day, we dance like crazy maniacs with the Torah in our hands in circles, and the Torah reading cycle is coming to an end. Rabbi, uh, the Chabad Rabbi Levi Avtson from Johannesburg, regarding all of this, said the following, and I quote, In the last year, as every year, we read and we are, we read and we are inspired by the Torah, the story of our nation. We were in awe of Adam, how awesome to be created by God and have the world for yourself. We sympathized with Noah. Poor guy saw the whole world going down. All humanity killed. We were impressed with Abraham, first thrown into the furnace by Nimrod, and then almost sacrificed his son from Sarah. We were caught up in siblings' rivalry between Joseph and his brothers, and held our breath at the breathtaking saga of the Exodus. And from, from the moment Moshe received the Torah at Mount Sinai until his final departure on Mount Nebo, we experienced the tumultuous 40 years of the journey through the desert, uh, the, the old Torah laws, mistakes, complaints, smashing of the tablets, spies, plagues, and the entire gamut of the nail-binding dramas which our drama-addicted ancestors lived through on their historic journey, the trek from the pyramids to the land of Israel. The Torah reading every week is quite entertaining and educational experience, first of all. It's, of course, it's much more than that. And as we start all over again, we hold our breath, aware of the journey to come. What lessons, what insights, and what inspirations we will derive from our patriarchs, matriarchs, the next time around, reading the Torah again. What mysteries will we discover? We will uncover but before we roll back the Torah from the banks of Jordan River to 2,500 years earlier, because we start again from Bereshit, let us reflect for a moment on Moses, his final words uttered just before he went up to the mountain and was buried by God. Let his last words linger in your hearts and in your minds. He said, Fortunate are you, O Israel. What a wonderful parting words. They are wonderful. Moses was proclaiming to the Jew of Israel and of Babylonia and the Jew of Tunisia and the, and the Jew of Spain and France and United Kingdom and Poland and Russia and Australia and America. He was saying, in other words, my beloved nation and my fellow Jews, how lucky, how fortunate you are, how wonderful it is to be a Jew. No, being a Jew is not an eternal damnation as some people say. And no, it's not hard to be a Jew, nor is it a burden you must carry. No secularism, assimilation, or self-hate, they are not the way for a Jew, and they are not the way for humanity as well. Rather, yes, you are lucky to be a Jew. 
Yes, although you may live through hell on earth for the next three millennia, which is what Moses saw, you should and you will always hold your head high. Yes, being a Jew is a gift, a cause for joy. It's a piece of heaven. Yes, Torah and Mitzvot are blessings. They connect us to our Creator and transform this world into a better place for all mankind. My dear friends, as this month of Tishrei comes to a close and we look back on the most powerful months of the year through which we accepted God's sovereignty on Rosh Hashanah, uh, we were forgiven on Yom Kippur, and we got united with God and our fellow Jews on Sukkot. We were dancing our souls and the soles of our shoes on Simchat Torah. And it is now the time to declare our pride in our Jewishness. I am a Jew and I am proud. I want to finish my last Torah blog, which it is the last one, completing this project with the words of a world famous Soviet Jewish actor and artistic director of the first Moscow State Jewish Theater, the leader of Russian Jews during the most terrible Stalin's era killed by KGB murderers in 1948. I'm talking about Salomon ben Shloma Mikhaels. One of his famous roles was the role of King Lear in Yiddish. And in the scene, when King Lear is talking to his daughters about his enemies, Mikhaels has added one phrase to Shakespeare's tragedy. We will outlive them. Shabbat Shalom and goodbye. <laughs> Oh!